The good member from the 19th, Representative Walsh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is a good amendment. Please vote yes. Um, throughout my time in the legislature, Madam Speaker, I've heard from constituents and from people all around the state who complain to me, they say, uh, you know, what happened to the lotto money, Walsh? Why doesn't it go to the schools? You know, what happened to the marijuana tax money, Walsh? We thought it was gonna go to schools and law enforcement. Well, Madam Speaker, in this underlying bill, we are burdening the people of this state with an ungainly, volatile, and onerous tax by claiming that the proceeds are gonna to go to support young children. Yet we see that the proceeds, at least as designed, are going to an account which does not only support young children, it supports various expenditures. And Madam Speaker, what this amendment does is it answers that question that we get from frustrated constituents. If we adopt this amendment, the money will go to support young children, and we can look our constituents in the eyes and we can say the money is going where it, we said it was going to go to support young children just starting out in, in school. I, we need to be able to do that, Madam Speaker. We need to be able to reestablish credibility with the people of the state. This amendment helps us do that. Please vote yes. Thank you. Additional remarks. The good member from the 19th, Representative Walsh. This is a great amendment, Madam Speaker. Please vote yes. I've seen uh, in my part of the state the good that Opportunity Zones can do to encourage development, real estate development, small business startups. It's the best kind of tax policy, Madam Speaker. It directs private capital in constructive and creative ways. You know, it's much better for a person looking for daycare to get a good job that pays well in order to acquire the daycare that he or she needs, rather than having to rely on a state program to provide that daycare. Let's grow the pie, Madam Speaker. Let's allow these opportunity zones, which are ovens for baking pies, to thrive and generate exactly the kind of activity we want that creates economic growth and family wage jobs. I, I thought it was an oversight in the underlying bill that it was gonna try to tax uh, capital invested in opportunity zones. And now it seems like it was an intentional error. Goodness, Madam Speaker, vote yes on this amendment. Representative Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a good and essential amendment. Please vote yes on it. The great risk, Mr. Speaker, of the underlying bill is that it will break trust with the people of Washington. It will make, break trust by changing the rules for those who have been saving for their retirement for decades. It will break trust of those who are married and will have to face a larger potential tax liability because of the underlying bill. It will break trust with the people of Washington who have voted and stated time and time again that they oppose this volatile form of taxation. The risk, Mr. Speaker, goes far beyond the fiscal risk, which is significant. There is a foundational risk that we break trust with the people of Washington. What this amendment does is it puts the responsibility of having the final word on this policy where it belongs with the people of Washington. In order to maintain their trust, Mr. Speaker, we need to give them the last word on this matter. It's essential. Please vote yes. The member from the 19th District Representative Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a good amendment. Please vote yes. You know, we can call it an emergency clause. We can call it a necessity clause. The effect is the same, Mr. Speaker. It will prohibit 
make difficult uh, the people's voice to be heard on this matter uh, by making a referendum uh, more difficult. So the effect is the same. The, the quibbling over what, uh, what, what it is is not important. Uh, what is important, Mr. Speaker, is that the people are heard on this underlying policy. You know, you can talk about uh, standing with working families. I stand so close with the working families of the state of Washington that I want them, Mr. Speaker, I want the working families of Washington to have the final word on this policy. Let's let them tell us whether they support this or not. Vote yes on the amendment, give the people their voice. Thank you. The member from the 19th District Representative Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a good amendment, please vote yes. Keep in mind, Mr. Speaker, the fatal conceit. Frederick Hayek's great work that looked from an economist's perspective at the assumption that a central planner, that a state government, that a government can more efficiently identify needs and allocate resources to those needs than individual people can. The fatal conceit, Mr. Speaker, let's not give in to that. It makes for inefficiency and sloppiness in how we deal with tax revenues. This amendment helps a little bit. Vote yes on the amendment. The good member from the 19th District, Representative Walsh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, please vote no on this capital gains income tax. Um, the best reason to vote no, Madam Speaker, is that we can fund early childhood education and the elements of our paramount duty to education uh, without this new capital gains income tax. We can fund them from existing tax revenues to the state. And there are other reasons to vote no, Madam Speaker. Um, as you know, uh, Article 7 of our state's constitution is the part that talks about taxes in the state of Washington. And right at the start of Article 7, right at the beginning of Section 1, the constitution says that all taxes shall be uniform upon the same class of property. All taxes shall be uniform on the same class of property. And it goes on in, in, in Article 7 to talk about what property means. And as the Constitution has said, and as our courts have ruled for years, uh, income and capital gains are property for the sake of uh, determining tax policy. So, so the Constitution says that all taxes shall be uniform on the same class of property. It's an interesting uh, misconception, Madam Speaker, that, that this language prohibits a, a state income tax in Washington. It actually doesn't. What it prohibits is a uh, progressive or graduated income tax, an income tax that taxes people at different rates because of the same class of property, that is their income or capital gains. And, and Madam Speaker, here we come to the point. Throughout this conversation about this capital gains income tax, we have heard supporters bragging about the number of exemptions or exclusions to this capital gains tax. Uh, Madam Speaker, that's a violation of the state constitution. That is making this tax not uniform on the class of property of capital gains income. Madam Speaker, this is a serious flaw. This is a fatal flaw in the concept of this underlying. The good member has 20 seconds remaining. Please conclude. Thank you. Uh, it's a fatal flaw, and, and I think it's going to be a, 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 a challenge to the implementation of this policy. The policy is badly conceived, Madam Speaker. We don't need it. We can fund the good works through existing means. Please vote no.